When you hear the numbers 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. When you get to 0, we expect something to happen. Something shocking or exciting or magnificent. We expect some action of some kind. For example, it might be an explosion of a, a jet shooting into the space at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, or the blasting of big fireworks going off in celebration of some event, or it might even be the final seconds of a basketball game between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks or the Golden State Warriors or any other team for that matter. Just before the moment, the crowd busts into joy over victory or over success. These are joyous final moments, usually marking the end of something or oh, the beginning of something new. You know, the reality of the matter is uh, from the moment we are born, we are assigned a clock that is ticking. And uh, we often like to think that that clock is ticking in our favor, right? When we see little children who are playing, we think to ourselves, oh my goodness, these kids of 70 or 80 years or 90 or even 100 years ahead of them. What a blessing. Good for them. But the reality of the matter is from the moment a baby is born, he or she is losing time at the rate of 86,400 seconds every day. By the time uh, that child reaches the age of 35, he or she will have about 500 days left to live. Wait a minute. I'll explain how you get to 500 days. This 500 days are based on subtracting the time that child spends sleeping, walking, playing, tending to personal matters, eating, traveling, or other miscellaneous time stealers for that matter for the next 35 years or so. Uh, for example, the typical... American, well, because of medicine and technology, many are living up to about 90 or 100. But still, the end is the same for all of us, whether you live in Kenya or Afghanistan or, 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 or Somalia or name it, Cameroon, Egypt, Mexico, Argentina, it doesn't matter. All of us have the same ending. Last time I checked, 10 out of 10 will exit this world at one time or another. We are truly running against time. You see, when we think of the term stewardship, many of us think about, think of money. But I also think that Time is something God expects us to be good stewards of as well. God wants us to be good managers of our time here on earth. How we spend our time is going to be of tremendous importance. God will demand an accountability of us at the end of time. Are we good managers then of our time? How do we spend our time and what do, do, what do we do with the information that we know? And most importantly, what are we doing with this Jesus that we know of? When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we'll have to give an account. Make no mistake about that. I do not know if you've had a lot of people making excuses, saying that I, I don't have time. I don't have time to do stuff. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to read the Bible. But to be honest with you, we could all claim to be busy. For most of us, 
we have time for everything else, but we don't have time for family and for God and for friends. I mean, we can be on the phone for hours. We have time to play golf three times a week. We have time to scroll on our phones for hours and to watch our favorite shows on television on uh, Netflix or to read newspapers or even a best-selling book and lots of time to surf the internet. But we don't have time for God and reading the Bible. No time at all. See, I believe that being a good steward means that we have time to doing things that matter to God as well. A part of being a good steward is to study God's word and to know uh, that which God expects of us as men and women, as young and children, and as human beings who are created in his image. You see, in Psalm number 90, which is the oldest Psalm in the Bible, and the only Psalm that is written by Moses, the servant of God, Psalm 90 is Moses' prayer asking God for wisdom to make the most of his time on earth. Psalm 90 marks the beginning of the fourth book in the entire book of the Psalms. Psalm 90 is not only the only song that Moses wrote, because we see Exodus 15, Moses writes a song to celebrate victory over the Egyptian army at the Red Sea. And the other song of Moses appears in Deuteronomy chapter 32 as the nation is preparing to go into the promised land. But Psalm 90 is basically Moses' lament and his appeal to God for mercy. Moses wrote this psalm just before he died and he's looking back over his life and the nation of Israel for the last 40 years and he's saying, God, Teach us how to number our days. In the first two verses, he considers God and who God has been to him and to the nation of Israel. But in verse 3 through 12, he wants us to remember that life is a fleeting and a fragile thing. And therefore, in verse 12, he says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts of wisdom. Moses lived to be about 120 years old. But before he gets to verse 12, Moses reminds us of the infinite power of God and the eternality of God. See, Moses knew of the greatness of God and of how uncertain life can be. Moses knew that everything changes except the reality of God. Nothing about God ever changes. His power, his wisdom, his knowledge, those are all constants, but everything else changes. Moses knew that God is our only permanent refuge and hope. And so he begins by addressing him as search. He says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the old world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. So. Moses has an interesting opening here, for he addresses God as our dwelling place to a nation that had no dwelling place. These guys were strangers in Egypt, and now they've been wandering for 40 years in the desert. From campsite to campsite they went. God had been their home. The Hebrew here, word used here for place is often translated as refuge, a place where you have all that you need, a place where you can rest, a place where one can be safe from the dangers of this world. So Moses opens up this psalm with this strong declaration. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From generation to generation, you have been our refuge. And I would think at this moment, Moses is going back all the way to Abraham. He's saying, you, O oh Lord, have provided what we need. You, O oh Lord, have risen to be on our side and you have given us rest. You, O oh Lord, have kept us safe. You have been a dwelling place to our people that had no permanent place they could call a home. Moses reminds them, yes, God is our refuge. You know, we too have to remember this, that God 
is our refuge. Indeed, it was this particular psalm that inspired Isaac Watts more than 300 years ago to write one of the greatest hymns of the church. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. You see, it wasn't until 80 years old that Moses was called by God to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And so Moses knew the value of making the most of his time on earth. Moses valued God more than the riches of this world. For Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26 reads, By faith Moses, when he had come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Therefore, Moses prays this prayer. Lord, teach us to number our days. Teach us to value our days. Teach us to value the time we have left here on earth. Let me illustrate it this way. Suppose every day in your bank account, somebody deposited $86,400 or shillings for that matter. And if you didn't use that money for that particular day, you lose it. There was no carrying forward or carrying the balance forward to the next day. Each day you begin with $86,400. What do you do with it? Probably go on a spending spree, but you got to spend it for that day. You know what? We are given 86,400 seconds each day. Once the day is up, it's history. You can't save it. It's, it's forever gone. So let us not squander our time, but honor God with everything we have. We got to live like this is the day for us to live, or there is no saving forward the time that is supposed to be sent today. Spend your time wisely, and let's pray that God gives us the wisdom to know how to number our days. God, you've been our dwelling place from generation to generation. You have been our dwelling place. Thank you.